All right, if welcome back for the episode of Conover Trades. Today is Friday, January 19th, 2024. If you're not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on ConoverTrades.com for swing trading alerts, analysis, and live day trading. Anyways, let's get into it today. So happy all-time highs day for the markets. Um, so S&P here obviously taking out the uh, two-year standing all-time high 48.18 and uh, we did make a new high 48.42 uh, before pulling back intraday here and we've got about 20 minutes left in the day the close is no is of no consequence right now um, the markets you know broke out if we pull back a little bit into the close it's not a big deal if we squeeze up a little bit into the close it doesn't change what happened so um, I'll say first off I did not see um, this type of move coming today so Lately, I have talked about um, the possibility of us slicing that all-time high and um, kind of favoring that, right? Like I've been saying, it would be a little unusual if we got this close to that level um, without getting above it. However, it is very odd that we're doing it on a Options X Friday. So typically, if you're you know a veteran of the market, you know that these types of sessions are like pin jobs, right? We call them pins. You can see right here, I got these day trading lines on. We can actually get rid of those. But, um, it, you know, 4790, 4800, it looked this morning like that was what it was going to be. Just little, you know, 15 point range, you know, maybe a little fake out or something like that. Um, but 4800 kind of pin. And um, we obviously did not do that. And anybody who was selling calls there got run over um, intraday. You know, the markets did move higher. So we are through that level and uh, it definitely was an impulsive break. So markets here, um, you know, congrats to the bulls. And, um, you know, a lot of people talking about, oh, this is distribution in here. And this is, you know, I said very carefully, very concisely, don't get too bearish. Um, we expect to pull back here and then what? January effect, we are seeing that. Now at the same time, um, We've talked about a possible period of risk here, and obviously that's not been the case so far. I still think I want to see how this market trades after this is over with. I think big tech is going to be a lot different uh, going into next week. A lot of put flow into January OPEX. A lot of puts were bought all last year for January OPEX. A lot of puts were bought in 2022 for January OPEX. It's a leap OPEX. So a lot of those are decaying, and um, you're seeing the market makers buy that back. Why are, you know, how are we seeing this? I just look at the charts, right? Look at SMH, NVIDIA, you know, Microsoft. This is, these are the, the leading sectors, right? Look at, you know, XLE today. It's barely green. You know, Russell 2000, uh, you know, was red most of the day here until the afternoon when everything started to squeeze up. So um, not even really a good breath day, but again, it's the same, same damn story. Google, you know, Amazon, Meta, uh, Broadcom, AMD, Look at AMD, little distribution yesterday, then came right back up to the highs. SMCI, everybody's new favorite stock, up 35% today, uh, adjusting guidance. They will report earnings Monday, but this, uh, you know, for all intents and purposes, is their earnings um, call. But again, uh, big tech, semiconductors, that's what's leading the charge right now. Obviously, we had TSM the other day, follow through today. So again, semiconductors, big tech, I would like to see how this trades going into next week. Um, that said... If this market can hold up and we don't have any headwinds, right? We don't have a false breakout or something of that nature. Um, 48.50 is not that far away. 49 would be your next level. And then, you know, there's really nothing saying we can't go try and test uh, 5,000, right? So a whole round number. Um, we do have a little bit of a base to work off of. If that happens, I think it's going to have to come from something else other than NVIDIA. It's, it's going to have to come from something else other than Microsoft. You know, we're going to need XLE. We might need small caps to come back. And, you know, who knows? IWM here, um, nice pullback into the 50. We talked about this level 187 area. Um, and it's holding, you know, right into this um, little consolidation. Big green bar, 50 MA. And it's holding. So maybe this can get something going. Uh, maybe XLE Energy can get something going. You know, there's other sectors here that, um, you know, have not participated as much that could pick up the slack here. Um, but I think tech here is a little long in the tooth. We are starting to see some divergences build kind of on the weekly. You know, if we look at NQ. And just throw on an RSI. I mean, again, this is not a license to sell. I'm not trying to be out here and tell people to short the market. But um, 
this is, it does indicate to here that, um, you know, we're getting long in the tooth. So just be aware of that. Um, I still think the market, you know, even the Dow still pretty extended from that weekly 20 MA. Um, and I, I don't think we've done enough consolidation to sustain a breakout. I could be dead wrong. There's nothing to say that that can't, that we can't go higher. In fact, when you have a blow off top, if, if that's something that we're going to do right now, the most amount of gains are made in the shortest period of time and they're made in the most irrational manner. So there's nothing to say that, that, that we can't go higher here, but I would be very cautious about opening fresh longs at these positions. Um, you know, unless it's something, a quality name that's into support, a quality name that's had consolidation, um, you know, chasing tech here, I just don't think it's a very prudent or disciplined way to go about it. But markets right now are holding up. There's no real sell signal. And um, you definitely don't want to fight the tape because if this does go to 5,000, that's another 5%. Um, and I know all you guys are using options and you're leveraged, um, you know, so that's a lot of money that you can potentially lose trying to fight this. Bears will be pretty obvious, right? You'll get an outside move on volume and um, that'll tell us the top is in or, or there's distribution taking place. But until then, don't try to fight this. We just consolidated for a month. So this can go a little bit higher and um, we'll leave it at that for now. Triple Q's here um, above this little trend. So just kind of just, <laughs> we went up into this trend line that I've been talking about uh, today and it looked like, okay, we're gonna pull back. We're just gonna go sideways. Again, it's just gonna be an OPEX pin. And then we, we just took off. Take a look at this ALGO buy program. Look at how tight the range, just algorithmic buying here, pushing us all the way up. So we are through that trend line. Sometimes you can pierce through these levels and you'll come back in and retest them. But um, next level short term, I would just say 425 uh, for the triple Qs. So, you know, just four and a quarter psychological level. Um, and then after that, um, it's a lot, you know, it's a ways away, but I would just say 450. But um, I, I have not done, you know, any calculations on this. Again, we're at an all-time high, so it, we're in uncharted territory. It's a little tough to... Um, you know, to predict these levels here. But, um, you know, I can do it a little bit better on an intraday basis because we have gamma and order flow and stuff like that. But, um, you know, right now I'll just say 425 here in the short term for the Qs. Anyway, Russell 2000, uh, same thing. So 193.50, 197.50, 200, 205. Those are your levels there. If we take this out, um, then it's vulnerable down to, you know, 180 area. So just be aware of that uh, with the Russell. But um, I think it's it's acting well. It's doing what it's supposed to. It hit the 50 MA, basically hit that level. We talked about that. And um, I think there was a 382 there as well. Yeah, there's a 382 fib right there. So it's doing what it should uh, into that level. Um, and again, we'll leave it there. I mean, I would prefer to see it making new highs with the market, but it also outperformed the market during the fall into the winter as well. So it was up like 25%, whereas... I think the queues were up 15, so you know we won't make too much out of it. But um, again, it's holding up. Leave it there. Uh, Dow here again. You know, talking about a possible rolling top look. Um, it still kind of looks like that. It looks like it's kind of put. It's it's poised to put in a divergent high. We've also talked about that possibility as well. And it is getting an outside bid here, up one percent. But again, I just like this weekly. You know. The last time we were at this extended from the 20 MA on the weekly, and this is the Dow, right? This is not biotech or some like, you know, volatile sector. I mean, this is the Dow here. I mean, you gotta go back to like the COVID lows. Um, so I just don't think this has done enough consolidation to sustain a move. Doesn't mean we can't squeeze up on euphoria, but um, to me, it's not really a healthy, a healthy look. But um, again, I'm not telling you to short it. Um, you wait for a sell signal if you want to do something like that. All right, SMH here. Again, new all-time highs up about 4% on the day. Let's just call this uh, 200. So we'll say 200 there. Uh, maybe 190 will be a pit stop, but 200 is probably where that wants to go. We talked about the socks getting to 43, and it did, finally. Came up short in December, and then we had to put in a higher low. I told you guys, look, you had a bullish inside bar there on the daily. That's playing out to the upside, and it actually got through <laughs> resistance. Um, so... Um, next level, I'll just say 45 for this. But semiconductors are, are um, they are getting euphoric. They are irrational. Um, the AI narrative is, is as absurd as it's ever been. But just know that they can go higher. So just be aware of that. Um, one thing I will say is uh, big tech re is going to report very soon. These guys are now priced for perfection. I'll just say that. So any sort of weakness in their earnings, you know, I mean, they just 
the market essentially is just pricing in like the greatest earnings you know season of all time right now. I mean, we're at all time highs, right? That's the one thing that I would say that could be a, a disappointment. But right now, again, don't fight the tape. IGV um, breaking out. We talked about this possibility, right? Um, I don't love it, but it's kind of like sloppy consolidation. So you can make a case it was consolidating through this, you know, chewing through this supply here. And okay, all right, it's breaking out. It's fine. We'll leave it at that. Um, the 20 MA kind of caught up to price, at least close enough. It's not terrible. Uh, next level, pivot high, pivot high. That's at 430, 428, and then 440 and double top are your levels there. For the IGV, Dow Transports, again, so this level was definitely called out. I talked about 15.2. I said, you know, I know there was a lot of people worried about, oh, it's, transports are rolling over. I said, they're all right. Like, you, you, there's still a ton of support at 15.2. We spiked that on Wednesday, and now we're, at, um, you know, pushing back up. Still has work to do. Still got to get above this uh, red bar at um, 15.7. And uh, you have a psychological level here. Um, right there and again if you guys are new if you guys are old to the channel you've probably seen this a million times but uh, big level big point of control there but um, 15.7 you close above that I think the transports are, are just fine uh, but the 15.2 handle held really well and it, it's holding up right now all right let's get over here to interest rates so we uh, pull up my rates chart here Okay, so the two-year here um, continue to act well this week. Again, we talked about this level. We got a nice bounce off of it. Um, this actually looks okay. Um, it actually looks pretty good for a move to 4.5 and then maybe 4.6. So rates are continuing to inch up five-year um, into the 50 MA. So it may need to pull, pull back and stall out. But if, if this consolidates, it's going back to 4.3 and then 4.4. 10 year stalled out. I did close my TBT today. I would look to re-enter that um, on a pullback potentially. But, um, you know, these start to um, the 50 MA, you get a little pullback here, right? You went to the red bar 30 year, um, got a little bit above that, but got into the 4.3 area, got close to 4.42 or 4.4 rather. So you get a little pullback here and a bull flag. This is going higher. I'm very interested. Like, I'm so interested to see how this market handles rates continuing higher and the dollar continuing higher. Um without that kind of OPEX zombie bid because the market's been ignoring it for three, four weeks now. But um, yeah, rates are looking good here and um, I don't see any issues with those charts. I think the lows are in. XHB, that can still go higher, but it is uh, still overbought weekly. Again, extended from that 20 MA, I'd like to see it catch up to price or if it pulls back into, into this area, then it could be you know a higher low attempt. Um, but again, it's a little still overdone on the weekly but it is trying to work that condition off so don't fight it here um, if it fails on the weekly though and we have like a you know i'd say if you get a weekly close below this big grain bar so 87.50 then um that could be a sign of a much more major top but right now it's 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 just fine here uh the nq here that is up 1.13 and again kind of like the russell up move into you know december pulling back here big wide range green bar Good base there on the daily chart, 50 MA, and it's getting a bit. It's holding, it's doing everything it should. Um, next level is right around 88. XLF, again, I still think this is getting a little top heavy, but again, like the Dow, it looks so much like the Dow here. Um, that kind of divergent high, and then the rolling top, and then holding, and then a big pop there. Um, again, 38 and a quarter to 38.40. I think that the technical level is like 38, yeah, 38.32 ballpark range um, but we have consolidated here so just be aware that if this goes up maybe it could overshoot to like 39 there's a pivot right here on the weekly let me go to the daily so we can get a little bit more precise yeah so you can see these pivots here around 39 and then you got the, a big big one at 39 you know 40 bucks rather um, again weekly still a little overbought from that to that 20 so it might need to do more consolidating but um, right now, it still looks like you can get to that 30 and a quarter area. Um, KRE, nice bid off the 50 MA. Again, same chart, right? Green bar, 50 MA, and it's getting a bid. So this can get up into that handle again. Excuse me, maybe this is a sector, right? Maybe VNQ, maybe um, IWM, maybe KRE. 
KBE takes the reins here. That's maybe that's what gets us to 5,000, you know, as big tech and semiconductors cool off. I mean, that would be the healthy thing, but, um, you know, that's not always what happens. But anyways, <laughs> um, you know, KRE holding the 50, uh, still get to 55, 56. KBE holding essentially the 44 handle on a weekly close. That can still get to 48 uh, to 48 and a quarter. Broker dealers, uh, it's kind of in no man's land. Um, just a pullback here after a parabolic move. I still think that wants to come down to 520 at some point, but it, it's holding up right now. All right, let's let's get over to oil. You know, this is just ridiculous. Um, so oil down 38 cents. You, you know, if you look at like to the letter of the law, right? This is a wedge breakout. It, there's no other way to say it's not, right? I, pivot I, pivot I, pivot I, goes below it and we close above it. But we're not like, I don't know. You guys tell me, tell me in the comments. Does that look like a breakout? Does that look like conviction? I mean, we're not even above the 50, we're not even gonna close above the 50 MA. So I'm gonna say, you gotta get above 75 to even, like that that that, that would do it to me, is if we can get above 75 again um, with a close and confirm it, then we'll go to 78 and then 80. Um, but I, I don't see it right now. And furthermore, um, you still have a weekly bearish inside bar here, technically. Um, we've had two of them in the past, both of them have failed. So there's something to be said about that, but I have a theory. Um, I think that rates went up into this area and if they consolidate and then go higher, I think then crude can go higher, but I don't think this is ready to, to push higher just yet. It might have to consolidate beneath this level and then go up. That's kind of my base case. If it does go lower, there's support at 67 and then all the way down to 64. Um, that's kind of the max downside I see for it right now. But crude is just, it's just been very stubborn, very wishy-washy lately. Um, decent for day trading though, but um, swings are, are very challenging. XLE uh, hit our upper 70s level. This should get us a bounce, um, 82 and then 83.50. XOP, um, dual tails, so double tails in a row, green bar. This should get a bounce back to the trend line um, and maybe like 135 or so. That's all I have in the cards for it right now. OIH, um, I do like this. I did manage to get a little bit of exposure to this. Um, and you guys know that I love this level. It could still go down a little bit further, um, at which point I think I would just probably add more. But um, I, I really like the OIH here. So oil services, I think is very good. Um, you CCJ pull back this week on the weekly, it's just fine, no problems. Your NM pull back this week on the weekly, it's just fine, no problems. Um, that gas pulling back here today, I did the 250 level. I do like this level for a bounce. Uh, we'll see what that does next week. A lot of backwardation in that right now. Dollar index we talked about already. Put in a low up move, bull flag up move, one, two, three pullback. Could this catch up? Could this uh, 20 MA catch up? And then a zigzag? Yes, I think that's my base case to 104.35. Gold today up with the dollar down, but not a ton. So nothing really doing there. Um, you have higher lows right now. There's a lot of support at this green bar low. There's support at the 200 and, and 100, and then there's support at 1950. If this pushes higher, I, which I don't see happening right now, I think the dollar is going to firm up. Um, if it pushes higher, you've got uh, 2075, 2100, and then obviously the master level at uh, 2150. Silver here, I think this has got to go test 22, maybe 21 and a quarter. I just don't like what it's doing. You're not defending. That green bar low is not getting defended. We've closed below it twice now. So it's on the weaker side. I think silver needs to go test lower prices. Platinum, um, not quite follow through, but it's holding up after yesterday's move. If this can follow through, it'll go to 950, 960, and then back up close to 1,000. Palladium is holding double bottom on a weekly close. It needed to do that. Um, well, it didn't need to do that, I suppose. I still like it a lot in this level. Um, copper did get a little follow through here. So holding this green bar, so that's holding up as well. Um, I don't, you know, I would just say like 385, 390 here in the short term. Um, if it loses these pivots, it's going down to 360 to 365 though. Uh, Bitcoin is interesting. We talked about the chart damage yesterday, um, but the weekly is still all right. Um, as long as it doesn't like collapse below 40K on a weekly close, I think Bitcoin's fine. Ethereum is still acting really well. This is a really strong pattern here. I mean, that's that's healthy. 
you know, bullish in sidebar, 20 MA, above the moving averages, good spacing. So I think Ether, you know, might be, a, I mean, we know the ETF news and it's getting the sympathy, could be the next hype thing. Um, the weekly looks fine as well. So I don't really see any problems there. You just got a lot of resistance here, but you know, you're consolidating and that's, um, that's a good sign. So um, next big, big, big level is like 32 for ETH, um, and, but that looks all right. Um, Bitcoin's still holding up though. Um, so no real problems, but I do think ETH is, uh, is interesting here. All right, um, lastly, let's take a look. Market's closing in about a minute. Okay, so we're just at the highs of the day. Again, don't fight the trend here. Um, new all-time highs. If we get a sell signal, a failed breakout, um, I'll let you know about that. What would, what would that entail? You got to get back below 47.90 and I would say a close um, below 47.85. If we follow the spiders, um, it is below, you know, this, this green bar low on volume though. So it's got to be on volume. Um, that would indicate that we may have a failed breakout in play. Um, but until then, let's not fight the tape and um, respect the strength here when the semis are strong. Um, you definitely want to respect the market. That said, we are going to earnings and um, be careful. We could be going into euphoria mode. Um, so just keep that in mind as well. Anyways, guys, going to wrap it up here. You guys take care. Have a great weekend. Come find me on ConvertTrades.com. Talk to you guys all next week.